Yeah. I'm off there. <laughs> yeah, um, really good question. We'll, I will come to that and we'll talk all about sort of the hedging strategy that we're that we're looking at implementing for the fund in light of everything that's going on in the market. So we'll go over that in a little bit of detail. Um, before I do, we uh, just want to talk a little bit about, about Jasper generally. So uh, Mark Campbell, I'm one of the co-CEOs at Jasper and one of the founding team for the business. Um, so the business itself, we're, we've been operating for sort of two or three years, um, so relatively new to the market. Um, but really experienced, sorry, if you can't hear me in the back there, um, but really experienced team, executive team and board of directors that sit behind the business. So um, we're effectively, as we say, here, a digital platform for investing in commercial real estate assets. Um, in a lot of ways, we're, we're a traditional fund manager. You know, we're out there, we look at um, technical difficulties there. Um, we're, we're looking at a number of investment strategies in the market and we're raising capital for those investment strategies for a number of different places, um, whether that be sort of diversified or core value add industrial. The, the sort of point of difference for our business is we have a, a very large technology component where ultimately we're looking to add sort of efficiencies and innovation to that fund management environment. Um, a lot of you guys will sort of know what I'm talking about there, having come through the, the onboarding process at Jasper and having invested in, our, in the last capital raise in December, if you're annoying there. Um, and, and a lot of that is, as we know, commercial real estate investing generally is, is, is pretty old school and we're, we've got a sort of world-class tech engineering team that's, that's ultimately looked to solve a lot of the pain points of that process. So your investor onboarding, all the AML, uh, we've got a really frictionless process there. How we actually showcase the assets in our fund, um, the investment process itself and, and upcoming after this capital raise, we're looking to launch our, our secondary market to sort of solve that, that liquidity piece or add liquidity to commercial property um, as an investment class. So Jasper itself, in a lot of ways, we're, we're a fund manager, we, we focus on commercial real estate at the moment, but we have a big tech component to the business, which you know is a real point of difference for us in terms of our competitors in the industry. Um, just to touch on the, uh, the leadership team, so as I said, yeah, Jasper is uh, quite a new business uh, in the market. Um, we've been operating from around 2019, um, but we've got a, an incredibly experienced executive team, uh, chairman and, and board of directors. So myself, just to give a little bit of background on me personally, um, I've been working in commercial property for sort of coming up 15 years now. Um, originally in Auckland, did, sort of hear myself back. <laughs> Originally in Auckland, uh, did three or four years here. This was back in sort of 2007-2008, sort of pre-GSC. Um, worked with the Goodman guys um, here. We're obviously great operators in the market still currently. Um, a heavy focus on industrial property. So I was sort of into sheds um, from, from right at the beginning of my career and sort of continued that on um, throughout. So did a few years with Goodman in the New Zealand market. Um, I went over to London, ended up doing 10 years in London, so I was in London from 2009 to 2010. Again, worked for Goodman in the European operation, again we were running sort of portfolios of, of incredibly large logistics assets, sort of 100,000 square metre sheds for, for Amazon um, and other sort of e-commerce providers. I, I then did the last sort of five years um, working on some pan-European value-add industrial funds not dissimilar to, uh, to the Income Plus Fund, just at a, a bit more greater scale. So we had a, a sort of US private equity partner and we grew a fund there of about 12 billion NZD, sort of over a thousand assets of very similar stock to, to the Income Plus assets. So it's very much in my wheelhouse, it's very much my experience over the last 15 years of my career. Um, and you know, as a co-founder in Jasper, it was sort of always where we were going to start in terms of the investment offerings on our platform. Um, and not to mention all the tailwind behind the sector, but I will come to that. Obviously, you guys know Matt, who heads up our investor relations, and we'll be sort of dealing with him on a day-to-day -day basis through this capital raise. Just, just quickly, Ken Gardner, our chairman and one of our directors, he's sort of he's based in New Zealand and again runs sort of billion-dollar operations across the globe. Really well-renowned guy in the commercial real estate space, um, and perhaps a few familiar faces here for for, for some of you. Craig Donaldson, really well known around the New Zealand market, um, his background in financial markets, so we've leaned on him a lot through this interest rate hedging and strategies in and around that, given what's going on in, in markets at the moment. Nick Beale, the managing director of RCP, you know, one of New Zealand's biggest project managers, and John T. Count, who's sort of built a number of global tech companies around the world. So 
as I say, one, we're, we're a relatively new business, but you know, a heck of a lot of experience across the board from, from the Jasper team and also our, our, our advisors. So coming to the fund, um, we're really proud of, the, of this offering, or we were back in December, um, in terms of the initial three collection of assets that, that we aggregated there. You know, we, we spent as a team uh, sort of six months um, pulling those three deals together to, to launch what was really the first, uh, the first offering on the Jasper platform. Um, so initial three assets, we've, we've added two new assets. Again, we've, we've really, as a team, spent sort of six or seven months um, out there sort of searching and scouring the market. You know, I think conservatively we've, we've looked at, at, well, hundreds of millions of, of opportunities across certainly the Auckland market, which is the main focus at the moment, but to actually come to a landing on on two assets that we are, you know, ultimately comfortable enough to to add to the to the fund and to not obviously dilute the quality of, of the existing three assets that, that we put in. So we've increased the size of it quite quite significantly. So we were original asset value there of 25 million. That goes to just under 70 million now across the five assets. We're raising 21.8 million of new equity at a 5.25% at a pre-tax cash return um, and push that wallet out considerably to eight years. So. I want to um, dive into a bit of the detail on the individual assets. Uh, again, a little bit about the fund. So obviously we've, we've had a core focus on, uh, on Auckland Industrial. Um, we've, we've talked a lot about sort of going to, or spreading the wings to the Golden Triangle, looking at Hamilton and Tauranga markets. Ultimately, haven't found a huge amount of stock in those markets that we've felt um, was strong enough to add to the fund, although we do obviously have an asset in there for Pocono, which we'll touch on in a minute. Um, so incredibly well diversified across those, those, um, across those assets in the Auckland region. Um, the 5.25% cash return and push that wealth out, as I say, to, to eight years. Um, Ian sort of touched on industrial sector generally, which, which I'll come to. Um, and come best with us, it was a point that Matt made of the, the Jasper team, the executive team, our advisors, our board are all sort of co-invested in this offer alongside you guys. Um, again, a little bit about where, where we've come from, from 8th to December, which was inception of the previous fund. So we're 25 up to 70 mil, um, added, the, added the additional two assets, we're up to six tenants, still 100% occupied. Uh, obviously, and, and considerably push that wealth out to eight years with, a, with the two new assets having sort of long underlying leases, um, and, and a really nice, really nice spread of tenant industries and diversification across a number of different sort of a, a, a tenant tenants there. Um, we're still predominantly focused on Auckland, 66%. We have uh, obviously acquired a rather large asset in Pocono, uh, and, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Just in terms of that, uh, I want to highlight the total return since, since inception of the existing fund, so annualised of 21.1% there. That's for those three existing assets. Um, we've had sort of significant valuation growth in that underlying portfolio since we acquired. Uh, so we acquired for just over 25.2 million um, and currently valued at 27.5 million, which actually given sort of market comps and, and sort of evidence we, we think is actually really conservative for that existing portfolio. So we feel really good about those existing three assets and what was really important to us was just to not dilute the quality of this fund and obviously a big sort of concern for investors of any new assets that we wanted to introduce which is why we've been you know really meticulous about actually out there and searching and, and, and finding a couple of new acquisitions that we feel comfortable adding to this portfolio and you know really pleased with the two assets that we uh, that we have found. Um, so I'm just going to dive into the dive into the, the assets here. We'll start with Yashili Drive uh, down in Pocono. Um, really interesting story with this one. Uh, so we uh, the the Pocono story itself is interesting. There's a huge amount of development and infrastructure, industrial and residential going on in that pocket. Um, so when we said we, we you know didn't want to venture too far from Auckland, you know there's got to be a really strong fundamental story for us to be comfortable anywhere outside the Greater Auckland region. Um, I think with Pocono, you know we have found it. Uh, there's a number of big occupiers in this area from an industrial point of view. There's a huge amount of development going on in and around that area from uh, in terms of resi and industrial and commercial, um, and it is really right on the convergence of that sort of say Highway One south to Hamilton. Uh, and East State Highway 2 to, to, uh, to Tauranga. So it sits nicely at the sort of focal point of the Golden Triangle for us, so we were comfortable um, going down here for, for another investment. So it's, it's, it's a large asset, obviously just under 25 million. Um, 
NZ Drink says an occupy. As you can see, these are these are sort of the hero images of a, of a lot of the content that you would have seen for the fund. Uh, it's obviously an incredibly impressive uh, industrial building. They're pretty much brand spanking new. Uh, so one was built. The, uh, this one here was built in 2016, and then to increase capacity or to increase capacity for NZ Drinks from a manufacturing point of view, they they built them the second shed in 2020. Um, the really interesting story about this one is if I uh, carry on down. So NZ Drinks are obviously a manufacturer and bottler of, of water. Um, they have their own brand, Pure NZ, which you are probably quite familiar with and have seen around supermarkets. Their revenue is quite nicely split, about 50% of their own brand into NZ Drinks or Pure New Zealand Drinks. And then they do a ton of manufacturing and bottling for actually a lot of the high, uh, of the big supermarkets, sort of Woolworths and uh, Countdown and New World and others. So it's got a nice split of revenue there. Um, the, the, guys, the, the guys that are actually acquiring the asset off are sort of the, uh, have developed a lot of this Pocono area. Um, and whilst they were developing it out to some of these big occupiers, they, I wouldn't say stumbled, but they came across basically an underground aquifer that sits about 50 metres from the building just down here where, talk about sort of stumbling on a gold mine, um, they, they stumbled on this thing which ultimately they were going to have to pump in water from, from the Waikato or from sort of further up into South Auckland but actually they were able to access this underground aquifer and they've, they've essentially agreed a resource consent which allows them to pump 5,000 cubic metres out of the ground on a daily basis. Um, so who's your perfect occupier? Obviously a water and drinks manufacturer is, is, is pretty good. I think in the hundreds or over a thousand of industrial assets that I've managed or acquired or been involved with in my career, that is, that is probably the strongest story in terms of an te entrenched tenant or a tenant with a real reason to be there. So they actually, um, might be a bit of photo here, so they're, they're actually pumping that water out of the ground and it's coming up into these two 5,000 litre tanks. Um, and then they've got a huge amount of manufacturing um, or machinery in this half of the warehouse where they're actually sucking that up out of those tanks and man well, bottling that water. And they do sort of over 30,000 bottles uh, per hour, um, all, all with recycled plastic. Uh, it's an incredible operation. The rest of the warehouses are ultimately sort of high level racking, um, but they're looking to expand their machinery through, oh, throughout this building here and add additional racking over here just to increase that manufacturing capacity. So it's, it's the ideal spot for them. Um, you know, they're, they're incredibly entrenched in that space. The actual quality of the water is quite interesting. Um, I, I won't claim to know the full science behind it, but uh, essentially the water that has seeped through the, uh, through the bedrock uh, has done so over a period of just under 200 years, uh, or 180, 190 years, which means it has seeped through prior to sort of a lot of pests and other things. It's incredibly high, so, so it works really well for for, for their brand, that sort of pure New Zealand clean and green uh, image. Um, and, and, you know, they've, they've got a wonderful operation there. They uh, domestically want to have sort of one of the largest market shares for bottled water. Um, what they're doing and one of the reasons behind actually expanding into this, uh, this, this guy here in 2020 is to increase their, their manufacturing capacity and look at, if they have sort of really nailed the New Zealand domestic market. They ultimately want to look offshore um, and look at other markets and they see a real opportunity there. Just before we, we went unconditional on the asset, actually, they've, they've had a bit of an influx in capital into the New Zealand drinks business to basically facilitate that expansion offshore. Um, so, you know, amazing operation there, really entrenched tenant, uh, a great reason to be here. They've obviously committed to the site for a 12-year lease, um, and, you know, there's every chance that they'd be there for much longer than that. Uh, the resource consent to actually enable the, the 5,000 cubic metres to be pumped out of the ground, that runs to 2034, so that's a couple of years beyond that lease expiry. Um, now, we, we've, we've talked to the guys a lot about this and sort of probability of that being renewed, but actually that, um, that, that aquifer or that water actually supplies, this is your Shirley uh, Dairy, this is Sinlay Dairy, that's Heinz Pipes, um, we might have it here, yeah, you surely Sinlay Heinz, there's a, uh, a, a large, uh, a whole new multi heat industrial development going on here. There's a big new retail development going on here, sort of commercial retail space. Um, because they're actually servicing quite a big residential population now, there's, there's sort of consents in place for another 7,500 homes just sort of around the corner. So it will become a, a real hub and, you know, that water is supplying that, that whole area and, you know, there, there's every chance that that will just be continually renewed. 
and they will be an occupier in this building, we hope, for a very long time. So great story, they've got a great operation. Um, and, and just in terms of the underlying bricks, it, it would, would probably be one of the highest quality industrial buildings we have in, in the portfolio um, now. Uh, so, uh, so one that we're really proud of to acquire. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's the, the biggest rent roll there, and they've, they've obviously term out to 2022, and they've got uh, sort of three yearly market reviews uh, throughout that period. So. Um, that's the story behind New Zealand Drinks, a really interesting one, but a great asset for us. And, and the only reason we'd really feel comfortable sort of stretching our legs outside of the Auckland market. Um, I'll carry on, uh, time being a factor. Uh, so six Rhyme Place, um, this is the, the second addition to, to the fund, or the new asset to the fund. Um, again, uh, we really like this location, so I'll just click through. Um, so this is in a Margaret, Margaret, just past Margaret Bridge um, and just off State Highway 20. So reason we've targeted a, a, quite a few assets in this location. Well, we've targeted assets in this location for a while. Reason being, um, what they're trying to do is sort of a wider Auckland plan is to kind of redirect heavy traffic away from here, away from the CBD, away from the Harbour Bridge, round State Highway 20, northwestern State Highway 16 and north and south. Um, so there's a huge amount of activity in these industrial pockets that sort of border that State Highway 20 motorway, also State Highway 16, which is one of the other assets in the portfolio that we'll come to. Um, so we're, we've been targeting this pocket for a while and it was great to get our foot on this asset here. Um, ultimately, it's, uh, it, it's, going backwards. it's good quality, generic, medium stud, uh, industrial warehouse space, incredibly relatable. There's very little, if any, vacancy um, in this pocket. Uh, and, and you know, there's a real strong reheading story. So uh, the story behind this building is uh, the, the vendor who we're acquiring it off will ultimately become the tenant. So it's a sale and leaseback structure. Um, they acquired it back in 2016, 2017, um, and it was reasonably tired at that point. They've done a heck of a lot in terms of refurbishment of the building over the last three or four years. You can probably tell it's sort of brand new office, it's brand new facades, they've resealed the yard. They've replaced the office roof. They're currently doing a ton of works on the warehouse roof, um, just essentially to get it fit for purpose for their operation. Um, so it's a really clean industrial shed for us. Uh, they're doing a sale and leaseback transaction, so they will ultimately be the occupier of the building, um, and they've committed to an eight-year lease. A um, little bit about the tenants. So Exhibition Hire Services, they have a few different companies that sit under that banner, um, but effectively they provide, they're providing services and equipment for the, the event industry in New Zealand. Um, now, the event industry in New Zealand has you know, been one of the busiest sort of globally, given we have been open or not subject to major lockdowns um, at all, really. So these guys have been flat out. Um, I think they have committed to an eight-year lease. Um, we've also agreed a 12-month bank guarantee that sits in behind that. So you've got 12 months of rent sitting there in case anything did happen with that tenant or in case they came in trouble. But it is worth noting that that business has been operating for just under 30 years um, and, and you know right through COVID and everything else and performing really well now. But we have the security of a 12 month bank guarantee. I think the thinking is, you know, if you ever did get this building back vacant, you've got 12 months of lease security there. And in terms of a re-letting story, it would, it would re-let really well with low vacancy in the area. Um, because it was the vendor selling ultimately to themselves as a tenant, the rents in our view are actually quite conservative um, because ultimately they, them as their business will be paying those rents. So it's off a reasonably conservative rental level um, and we feel really good about the re story. But ultimately we think we've got a great tenant in there for, um, for eight years. That just gives you a bit of a picture of the rest of that pocket. You've sort of got Auckland Airport access and, and North on State Highway 20. Um, a couple of little points to note that you may have you may have read it in the IM. Um, what the vendor is doing some works on the building at the moment, um, so we've effectively committed to the transaction subject to the vendor completing those works, and that's around some rebracing, which is a seismic point. Um, it's essentially just some reinstatement of how the building originally was or was originally designed. Um, we actually just had confirmation today that. That process is going really well. Council has sort of ticked it off. They're going to do the works in the next week or so. Um, and then we've got a one-month period to settlement, which means it will line up pretty much uh, bang on at the end of August with the NZ Drinks asset in Pocono. Um, so we're committed to it, and the vendor carrying out a couple of little minor works within the building. Um, and, and then we're really happy with that acquisition. Again, it is one of the larger ones at $17.5 uh, but just really good fundamentally um, uh, 
a medium stud industrial space in a great little Auckland location. Um, so eight year lease, as I say, with a couple of rights to renewal. Uh, rent review structure, fixed 2.5% increases. Uh, and then we've got a market review every four years so we can catch some of those tail ones. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Let me know on time, by the way. Um, I'll, I'll, so that, that's the two new assets. Um, I will touch on the existing portfolio. Some investors who have been in the previous round will obviously know these assets well, but there are some updates here. Um, so West Point Drive, uh, this was sort of the previous hero image of the fund and, and an asset that we're, that we're also really proud of. This goes to that story similar to Rhymer, Rhymer Place, so all of that, that traffic and, and heavy trucking that's going to be sort of funneled through State Highway 20 and State Highway 16 um, ultimately is going to benefit the Hobsonville pocket, which is why we targeted it originally. This was pretty much a new, well as you can see, pretty much a brand new build warehouse when we acquired in 2019. Um, obviously purchase price 9.3, current valuation at 10.5 mil, which is obviously a great story for us, I think. In terms of comparables in this area, this, you know, in our view, that is actually uh, fairly conservative. Um, we've still got seven years on the wall. So just to talk, touch quickly on the tenants, um, Futura Trailers are an occupier in the front unit here. Uh, business is absolutely going gangbusters. They've just uh, agreed a whole lot of new contracts for a new range of boating trailers and jet ski trailers. Quite an interesting operation they've got going. They'd actually ideally like to expand from the front unit into the back unit and take the whole site. So we're working with them on that to see if that's possible with the rear tenants. Um, but ultimately business performing really strongly um, and again, a great pocket. Um, so that's looking back into Auckland and this Hobsonville pocket is relatively new. A lot of the stuff here is new build. Um, this, this picture here is a little date, well, it looks like a bit of a construction site all in and around here. So this is a main freight land, main freight are building a big DC here. You've got a data center going in on the corner and a couple of other small developments going up. So it really is filling up, most of the land being taken up, but really accretive pocket to, um, to the fund and just a, just a super high quality um, asset. Again, Futura Trailer is the one that I mentioned. Business absolutely performing really well. They had some issues around supply during COVID, like a number of business does. They said, or did, they seem to have come through through sort of the woods on that one and, and the business is absolutely flying and they're coming to us saying, hey guys, we've got six years left on our lease but we actually need to expand in the asset. And you know, that's a wonderful story for us from a tenant perspective, um, certainly in the current environment. Uh, so that's West Point, just touching on Tidal Road, Actually, all of these assets go to that story. Um, just on location, again, this is State Highway 20. Um, Rhymer Place is just a little bit further on. So this is on the other side of it. So again, going to that story, that shift in traffic flows. If, if we came back to around here, there was a lot of land. There's a huge amount of new industrial development going on. Um, a lot of really impressive new builds, which is ultimately just gonna reset sort of market rents in this, this little sub pocket. Um, Tidal Road itself, uh, again, pretty generic um, standard industrial space. Scott Tech, really interesting occupier. Uh, they're sort of uh, robotics and process machinery manufacturing. Um, they do a lot in the food and meat processing industry. Um, performing really well as well, I think, through the pandemic, the, the use of machinery and robotics and, and that, that sort of process manufacturing were far more prevalent in the pandemic for sort of health and safety and operational efficiencies and other things. They've won a ton of new contracts since we actually acquired, and I think share price is up by sort of 50% of, of what it was last year, um, and, and way far above pre-COVID levels. So underlying business there going really well. Um, one thing we did do on this existing portfolio is, um, and certainly with some of the slightly older stock, is we went through and did a big sort of capex um, analysis when we acquired. So we've done various works to these assets. We've sort of done some tidy ups on the roof here, some window fixings, we're working on the crane, and. The electrical distribution board just some tidied up sort of preventative maintenance stuff all was was budgeted in the original capital raise and for, sort of foreseen during our dd so nothing unexpected so ultimately assets performing really well there is a uh, there's a stepped rental increase from 338 to 380k in in a, in a month or two um which effectively aligns it with where the current market would sit for this particular tenant and then they've got some fixed and market rent review structures going forward a small bit of shots here. So this is sort of the Papakura industrial, uh, industrial precinct looking out. Um, really good asset again, it's sort of medium stud, pretty generic industrial stuff, split across three tenants. You've got Thompson's ITM, really well known brand there. They're sort of buoyed by all the construction activity going on in and around this area, but also for the new sort of Drury Town Centre development. 
Um, County's Aluminium on the corner, actually, they've just great story, just renewed in the asset for three years um, with no rental incentive and, and at, a, at a nice uh, higher market rent. Uh, again, buoyed by all construction activity in this sort of wider South Auckland uh, area. Um, and then another tenant, Kiwi Beverage, who sells sort of drinks into the supermarkets nationwide. Um, generic space, it's, it's a great little asset, um, really low site coverage there, so ITM utilise all of this yard. Great for their operation, they sort of couldn't find that space, heavy industry space anywhere else. Um, but ultimately, as, as the industrial market itself sort of continues to tighten, there's potential for sort of some further redevelopment in that area. Same as Tidal Road, we've done some CapEx works, we've upgraded one of the roofs um, and just some sort of minor preventative maintenance stuff. Um, we've actually also agreed market rent reviews for, well, for all three tenants now, which is an interesting point. Um, this is in certainly the most, well, aside from Pocono, the most southern uh, asset in the portfolio. We've had really strong market rent growth there, sort of seven, seven and a half percent, um, just because of how tight this market is. Um, there's a few new developments in the area that are pushing those market rents up. Um, which is a great result, which is, is sort of a wider a, a point to make around interest rates going up and market rent growth in the industrial sector generally. Um, so Hanua Road, you can see it there highlighted, a couple of new developments going on in and around um, and, and tenancy schedule there. So we've still got 20, County Aluminium was the only lease expiry that we had to deal with in the entire fund in the first year. Um, and that's, that's all renewed and pushed out for three years. And, Tenants were going really well there, so so a nice story there too. Um, so before I, it's it's a reasonably quick sort of helicopter view of the um, of the fund itself and the new assets that we're adding. I suppose I just wanted to touch on before we wrap up um, uh, Chris's points and, and Ian as well, just around interest rates and how we're looking at that and how we're thinking about that. So obviously, if you're a topical point in the media at the moment, um, so. I guess, uh, I guess the, the way we think about it is why are interest rates going up? And ultimately that means the economy is performing better than expected, certainly domestically. Um, Ian touched on it in, in quite a bit of detail, but the demand drivers behind industrial property in particular in terms of the construction sector, the infrastructure spend, the e-commerce tailwinds are incredibly strong, particularly in the Auckland market. So de those demand drivers are there, coupled with Interest rates are going up because we're going into an inflationary environment. Now, inflationary environment, when you think about it in terms of commercial real estate, is actually a positive because what you've got there is increasing construction costs, increasing replacement costs, which ultimately puts more of a strain on supply. Now, the reason we're so heavily invested in industrial property in Auckland is because of it's ultimately very supply constrained. Ian mentioned it, there's just not a whole lot of land that where you can go here, um, and a lot of it has been built out. So you've got a really land supply constrained story You've got replacement and construction costs going up, which are putting more pressure on that. Um, vacancy rates are at all-time lows, slightly up at the moment, but I think certainly peaking. Anecdotally, we're seeing so much demand for space, even across our portfolio, even though it is fully let. Um, so you've got really strong demand and supply fundamentals, which are putting pressure on market rent growth. We've got a really nice spread through the portfolio. You'll see it here. Market rents for this asset on every second anniversary of the commencement date were about 50-50. So what I mean by that is 50% of the portfolio is subject to market reviews and 50% is either fixed reviews or CPI. So CPI is obviously going to benefit again in an inflationary environment. But as long as you feel comfortable that your market rent growth is there, at Hanua Road and Papakura we've seen it, we've just executed three market rent reviews. Um, even in a rising interest rate environment, you're going to you're going to be able to main, certainly maintain or grow that five and a quarter percent return. Um, so, in terms of the supply demand fundamentals, we feel we feel pretty comfortable about it. Uh, in terms of thinking about it as part of the industrial property sector, how we we're thinking about interest rates. Um, yes, there is a lot of rhetoric at the moment about interest rates rising, but. I think the Reserve Bank, I think it's going to be gradual and it's going to be measured. I think you have to just look at what else is going on in the world and not too far further afield in the world. If you look at Australia, we've got Delta variant careering through there. Most of those states are currently in lockdown. Um, we've still got our borders closed and for the foreseeable future, I'm not sure any of us really know when they are going to open. Um, so yes, they have to sort of temper this inflationary environment, which I think is still ultimately a positive here, but it's not going to be interest rates rocketing up. I think that's going to be a gradual increase over the next 6, 12, 18, 24 months. Um, 
in terms of how we're then thinking about our interest rate management strategy and how we're dealing with that, given all of that, finally getting to your point. <laughs> um, so what we've, um, we've agreed a margin uh, with, with our lending bank, um, and that margin is fixed for two and a half years on the new assets coming into the fund. So we've got good tenure there. Then you've effectively got a, a floating or variable component of that interest rate. So what we've modelled or, or what goes to that 5.25% return is that we could effectively hedge our exposure to adverse interest rate effects up to 50%. So we could essentially fix 50% of that variable rate for two years and leave 50% floating. The reason we want to do it that way is, yes, you want to hedge your 50% of your exposure against any adverse changes in interest rate, although I believe they will still be gradual. And you want to leave 50% of your exposure variable because we still want the benefit of the fact that we're coming off 0.25 as an OCR um, and we're still off you know, historical lows in interest rates. So we still want the benefit of that, but we still want to hedge against the risk of, yes, interest rates are starting to creep up. So we've built in quite a lot of quite a lot of headroom into that uh, into our numbers and into that 5.25% return, so that we can ultimately put a good strategy in place around interest rates, get the benefit of the low, but also to hedge against interest rates as they rise. I think touching on the key covenants of our of our debt strategy, it's sort of the loan to value ratio and the interest coverage ratio, and ultimately the what. Um, loan to value ratio, we're at 48%. Again, we feel really comfortable at that level. I think. Because the existing portfolio, whilst we have had it revalued at 27.5, we ultimately think, given comparable evidence, that is that they are very conservative values. We have plenty of headroom from our lending bank's perspective for covenant, to hit the covenant. The other one they look at is your interest coverage ratio. Um, a sort of benchmark there is two times you need operating income. The fund is currently sitting at around three and a half times. Um, and the bank's benchmark on Walt is two years. Well, obviously we're up at we're up at eight years. So, in terms of the the sort of key debt covenants around our lending, um, we feel really good about that, uh, and and that's sort of the strategy that if that answers your question. <laughs> um, and in terms of the impact of values, uh, yes, I think it may have an impact. Um, yields have been, again, Ian pointed out, have been sort of. Uh, have been going down at, at quite a rate for a time, and maybe that will start to be tempered, but ultimately I think those fundamentals of the sector are still so prevalent, you're going to continue to see that market rent growth, which is ultimately going to hold up values or, or continue to see values increase. Especially um, if you've got the same sort of um, uh, review timeframes as well as your first few years here. Exactly right, exactly right. And a range of review structures so you can capture market rent growth, but you've also got some surety around the fixed rent review. CPI is great, or CPI plus one, because you're obviously going to get the benefit of that inflationary uh, environment. Um, so, I think, yeah, I think that's probably me. I mean, just to summarise, with you know, the team's worked incredibly hard to pull these new two assets into the into the fund. Um, you know, we're really proud of these acquisitions. We've worked really hard on them for the last few months. Um, the team is all co-invested in this fund along alongside our new investors, and yeah, we're, we're delighted to sort of present it to you. And, Really appreciate you guys coming out to, to sort of hear the story tonight. Um, I think we'll, we're, the, myself and there's quite a few of the Jasper team in the room, we will be around for an hour or so and it'd be great to you know take some queries offline or catch up with a few of you if, if we can or if you can stick around for a beer.